This is my old saw bench, and this is my new saw bench. And if you're watching this video, I'm guessing you have questions. Why is my old saw bench shaped like this? Why did I make a new saw bench? Why is my new saw bench shaped like that? Is it any good? If so, how did you build it? Why don't you just use a sliding compound miter saw? I'm going to answer all those questions and more in this video, so stick around. I suppose the first thing I should address is why I don't have a sliding compound miter saw. Now the thing about sliding compound miter saws is that unless you're framing houses and working on a job site, there isn't really a lot of support for the workpiece on either side of the saw. So what people end up doing is they'll get a special uh, table that it mounts to that has these wings that stick out and support the workpieces, or they will uh, dedicate a space uh, against a wall of their shop somewhere where they have basically to your miter saw on top of cabinet and there's really long support going in both directions from the saw and the issue with that is I don't have a very big shop it's only about 500 square feet if I were to dedicate that much wall space to a sliding compound miter saw station then I wouldn't have the space for other things like lumber racks or clamp storage or an extra workbench these are all things I think I would rather have than a dedicated crosscut section of my shop where all I'm really doing is just cutting stuff to rough length in the first place I do everything to rough length on the saw bench and all the space it takes up I'm sitting on right now another thing about a sliding compound miter saw is a lack of accuracy unless you're spending a lot of money on your sliding compound miter saw you might find it quite difficult to get to where it's very accurate. Now, of course, a handsaw like this isn't that accurate at all. It's just a big old panel saw, and it's really only for rough cutting. But I can then take my workpiece over to my shooting board, and then I can adjust the length of that board, clean up the end of it, uh, right down to the thousandths of an inch. And that is something that a miter saw might have a little bit of difficulty doing. All right, so this is my old saw bench. It's my original saw bench. It's the first one I ever built, and I've used it for years. It's got the battle scars to prove it. It's based on a design by Ron Herman, who's a guy who was known for doing restoration work. Back in the day, he produced some DVDs that were uh, about how to sharpen hand saws and how to use them, and they're fantastic. So if you can get a hold of that sharpening video in particular, I could highly recommend it if you can track it down. But I digress. So this saw bench is a split top design, the idea being that you can use this split to do your rip cuts down. Uh, it has these big wide feet on each end that help with stability. It also has a little ledge on the end of it that you can use like so. You can just kind of clamp a board on there and you can saw on the end of it or do any kind of chopping operations. It's solid enough that you could do your mortising on top of it as well. Uh, it has a row of dog holes down each side to hold your work. And it's, you know, it's a good design, but there were things about it that uh, I didn't like so much. Among them were that this split top was such that, you know, if you had a board on top of this, you don't know where that split is. So I ended up kind of sawing into it on occasion. And uh, eventually I would just do my rip cuts on the sides of it instead. Another issue I had was these big feet. I didn't end up using the ledge on the end very much at all. And these feet would get in the way a lot. When I would do my rip cuts down the side of the bench, I would actually chunk the toe of the, the saw right into it uh, over and over again. And every time I seemed to walk by this thing, I seemed to just kick it with my toes and almost wipe out. That's not so great either. Um, so these feet were just really bothersome. Another issue with these is basically there's just four pads underneath there. I had a really hard time in both of my shops finding a flat enough spot on the floor where it wouldn't wobble while I'm sawing. I, ideally, when you're sawing with a saw bench, you want your saw bench not to wiggle. So I would end up moving it from place to place to place, trying to find a spot where it actually stays solid. And that got really bothersome after a while. Another issue I had with it is these dog holes. This is basically made from just construction lumber. These are two by sixes. And I actually cut these dog holes with a brace and bit. And so there's a little bit of run out kind of that comes with that picture. And so my hold fast got to the point where they just wouldn't hold anymore. These holes just were not deep enough and they got walled out very quickly. I ended up having to ditch the hold fasts, or at least a possibility of using the hold fast, then I would have to use F-style clamps instead to clamp my work. Because I've never been one who uh, ever liked to saw by putting my knee on the work. It could still move and, you know, I don't know if people just have fat knees or what, but my knees are way too bony to be kneeling on my work pieces while I'm trying to saw them. I found that to be really awkward and really uncomfortable. So I needed a way 
to clamp my stuff to the saw bench. So those are all the issues that I had with this older saw bench design and I came up with a design that I hoped would address all of those problems and I'll show you that next. All right, so this is the new saw bench design that I came up with and the first and most obvious thing that you'll notice about it is that it doesn't have four feet or four legs, it's got three. Reason being is when you have three legs, you can put this anywhere on any surface, no matter how lumpy and uneven it is, and it will be stable. Um, of course, when it has three legs, it might not have as a wide of a base as something that has four feet on it or four legs. So I sought to counteract that by building it a little bit beefier. So all the legs are basically four by fours and the rest of it is going to be two by material, but I actually used a little bit better two by material. Instead of going to the home center, I went to the lumber yard and I found some nice, nice quarter sawn dug fir as clear of any knots and of course not as prone to wood movement. It's been excellent for both my workbench build and the saw bench build. A lot of this material is actually left over from my workbench build. Another thing I did that ended up working out better than the old saw bench is that because I basically built a top and laminated it to what was essentially already a complete saw bench, I have double the thickness wherever there's a dog hole, which means that my hold fast actually hold. And it's a very solid interface from which to do you know, your cross cutting or whatever. And of course, if I want, I still have plenty of areas where I can clamp a F-style clamp as well if that's and you know something that's more convenient to use than hold fast. So how do I like this new design compared to the old design? To make a long story short, it's awesome. To have three feet like this instead of four means I can put it anywhere on my floor and it won't rock. It's very stable. It's also very hefty, so it doesn't move that way. I can clamp dinghy or anything to it and cut it with uh, relative comfort using either hold fast or F-style clamps. It doesn't have any feet sticking out of it that I can hit with my toes. My stretchers are nice and recessed so I don't chunk them with the toe of my saw. If there's any issue with this that I could quibble with, it's that I built it shaped like an L. And what I should have done is built it like a backwards L because I am right-handed. And well, let me explain. So when I'm doing cross cuts, I like to saw from this side of the bench because when I'm pushing on the saw, I'm actually pushing in the direction of where my extra support is. It's super solid that way. If I were to stand on this side of the bench and cut this way, not as stable that direction, which means when I want to catch the off cut at the end of a saw cut, when it comes free, I have to reach over my sawing hand to do that. And that's just a little bit awkward. Um, I would prefer to have this L actually be backwards. So the short side of the L points that way. So I can saw from this side of the bench into that extra support and catch the off cut when it comes free with my hand without having to reach over my sawing hand. If there's anything I would change about this, it's that. Other than that, it's freaking awesome, man. Now, if you like what you saw here, please hit like and subscribe if it helped me out a lot. Also, hit the little bell icon if you want to be notified whenever I release a new video. And if you didn't like what you saw here, keep it to yourself, pal. Or check out one of my other videos. You might like one of those. Thank you for watching.